أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وحبيب قلوب العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد Our dear viewers, welcome to another episode of the Master of Messengers When it comes to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alih his words, his actions, his silence, and every stance that he takes must be studied because through his words, his actions, his silence comes Islamic laws and guidelines. Moreover, meaning that every single action Every single stance that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi takes, through it comes Islamic law and a teaching of the religion of Islam. Also, that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi is infallible in every single act, in every single word, in every single stance that he took in his life and in his lifetime. And this said, it is expected from every single Muslim, generation through generation, to compile and to gather the hadiths and traditions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and to pass them on from generation to generation through books and scrolls. So Muslims, from the lifetime of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, those who used to live with him till today, we can acquire the laws and the guidelines of this religion, the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the religion of Islam. As it came to us in the hadith and tradition that the angel of Allah, Jibra'il alayhi salam, would descend upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and he would teach him, he would teach him the traditions and the sunnah, the sunnah al nabawiyya the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi as he would teach him the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he would teach him the Holy Quran and the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Jibra'il would descend upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and he would teach him every single tradition, every single sunnah. Thus, it is required from every single Muslim to gather the traditions and the history of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and to pass them on from generation to generation. The admonishment of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi through abundant amounts of hadith, through various sources that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi would tell the Muslims to write every single word that came from the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and to register every single word and hadith and stance and occasion that they would witness Rasulullah or witness from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi upon scrolls and into books and to save them and to share them with one another. And these hadiths and traditions and sources will be listed below brothers and sisters translated from Arabic to English and for those who would like to read these hadiths from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi that he would tell the Muslims to save hadiths and to compile hadiths and traditions into books and scrolls you could follow the sources below that we will share with you in, in every single episode. The companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, the Sahaba, wrote the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, his tradition, his life. Those other than the Sahaba, meaning 
the Sahaba, those who lived with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi on daily basis, who accompanied him from morning prayers to dhuhr and as prayers to maghrib prayers, when he would sit in the masjid of Rasulullah, when he would sit in the masjid and sit with the Muslims, the Sahaba who would sit around him and learn from him, and those who were not Sahaba, for example, those who would come from adjacent cities, from cities around the city of Medina. Especially in the first decade of Hijrah, the first 10 years of the Hijrah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, a great abundant amounts of hadiths were written by companions, Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and those who became Muslims but did not live in the city of Medina but they would come to the city of Medina and they would take the scrolls and the books of the Sahaba and they would also write them into their own books and to their scrolls and then they would go back to their homes and to their cities and they would share it with the Muslims who lived in their cities and in their hometowns. The Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi would advise each other and encourage each other to write down the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. So for example, on a Friday afternoon, the Prophet gave a sermon and several amounts of Muslims or Sahaba and companions sat down through the sermon and wrote down the hadiths and the sermon of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and his teachings. On Saturday, those who were not present in the sermon of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi would bring their books and they would also register the hadiths and the sermon of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi through the scrolls and the hadiths and the books of the companions who attended the Friday sermon. And as we mentioned, people would travel from all around the Arabian Peninsula, all that area the Muslims took over, who entered Islam, who became Muslims. Almost half of the planet became Muslims and under the ruling of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, after they witnessed his teachings, after they heard the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the Qur'an. And from those companions who wrote the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Abu Bakr, in some sources, it is mentioned that he wrote an approximate amount of 500 hadiths from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He wrote and saved in scrolls and books from Rasulullah the hadiths and the words and his traditions that he witnessed in his lifetime living with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And the book Tathkiratul Hafidh the author Shamsuddin bin Ahmed bin Uthman, volume 2, he mentions that Abu Bakr wrote almost 500 hadiths and traditions from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. But as soon as the Prophet departed from this world, Abu Bakr erased every single hadith and destroyed all the scrolls don't ask me, brothers and sisters. Ask the author of this book. Why this occurred? We have to go in depth into history and inshallah we will in this show. Yes, we mentioned that thousands and thousands and hadiths and traditions were written by the companions. But were they saved? What happened to the traditions and hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? As for Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afwal as-salati wa salam 
he would never leave the side of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Not for a second. From early morning, throughout the day, throughout the nights, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam, from the moment of birth, as soon as he opened his eyes, he opened his eyes and the eyes of his beloved cousin and his messenger and his prophet Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. He was raised under the supervision of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. In his home, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi would rock his cradle as a child. He would feed him, he would nurture him until he grew up into a teen, into a man, until he married him off to his daughter. But Amir al-Mu'mineen le never left the side of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, except the day of the battle of Tabuk. So Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afwal salatu was salam, his main concern was to gather the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, to save them into scrolls and books. Even, even one day he was asked by one of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, how come out of all the companions, you have the most books, you gather the most hadiths? Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam responds, he responds, or he responded to this man in every time that I would ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, he would respond, he would give me the answer to my questions. And when I was quiet and sitting next to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Rasulullah would start by telling me, Oh Ali, have your paper and pencil ready and start writing. And he would start to teach me and I would write everything that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi would tell me. Thus, we never had time to waste. Rasulullah, either I would ask him or he would start off by teaching me. And I would write every single word that came from the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And same thing with his sons and his lineage. And same thing with his Shia, the Shia of Ali ibn Abi Talib. They continued on this tradition of their master into saving hadiths and the history of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi generation after generation. And from the most famous of quotes or hadiths from Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afwal salati was salam, qayyidu al-ilma bil kitabah. You should reserve your knowledge into placing them into books compile them into scrolls and into books so they are not lost and they are passed on from generation to generation. There is something to observe and notice, brothers and sisters, and our dear viewers. When it comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam, all schools of thought throughout the Muslims have brought this hadith and tradition from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi that I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its gates for a person who wants the knowledge he should come knocking at the doors and the gates of the city of knowledge but there is something to notice that why when it comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi afwal salati was salam, if we leave the books of Ithna Ashari Muslims or the Ja'fari school of thought, we will find a very small amount 
of hadiths from Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And we will find huge and enormous amounts of hadiths and traditions from those who lived with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi merely days or months in a way that there is no comparison. You'd say it was the opposite, that this man lived with the Prophet from the moment of his birth to the time of, depart of, of the departure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and Ali ibn Abi Talib only witnessed Rasulullah for days or months. When it comes to Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi wa salatu wa salam and we enter the books of other schools of thought, we find 158 hadiths approximately that come from Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. 148 hadiths from Abu Bakr, but over 5,000 hadiths from Abu Huraira, who lived only several days or several months with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. 5,374 hadiths to be exact. So how did this occur? Brothers and sisters, if our own history registers that no man carried more hadiths and books that had saved the words and the history of Rasulullah more than Amir al Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, how come today there is only 158? And if we say that Abu Bakr did not destroy or erase the 500 hadiths that he had recorded from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, how come we only find 148 hadiths today, but we find 5,374 hadiths from Abu Hurairah? So, our dear viewers, this is something to notice and observe. And of course, as for the teachings of Rasulullah, he advised us and he advised every single Muslim to seek knowledge and to write and to pass on the teachings of Rasulullah, his sunnah, his teachings, his history, his words, his actions from generation to generation. But of course, there was also an opposition, meaning that from one side, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi would tell the Muslims to compile hadith, to save the hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And the other side, the opposition, would tell the Muslims and those who wrote the hadiths of Rasulullah to stop and refrain from writing and saving their traditions, <coughs> the tradition of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And their excuse was that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi is a normal human being. So he becomes angry and he has emotions. So his emotions might take over him. His anger might take over him. And not everything that he says can be justified or comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we want to point fingers, and if we want to say who was the opposition, this opposition started through Quraysh. Quraysh and those who were connected with Quraysh, those who lived with Quraysh, those who roamed around Quraysh, those who lived with Quraysh were the opposition. They would tell the Muslims and those who would write the traditions and hadiths of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, that this man, his words, they cannot all be trusted because he becomes angry and he has emotions. 
And from those who opposed, if we trace back to the sources and the history, we will see that in the book of Ahmad ibn Hanbal, volume 2, pages 162 and 192, the hadith states that one of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi by the name of Abdullah ibn Amr, he states that I would write everything, absolutely every single word that came out of the mouth of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. Every tradition, every hadith, every teaching, everything that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi used to do, I used to write it down and save it in my books and scrolls. But the opposition, Quraysh, they summoned me and they told me, you should stop writing these traditions and hadiths because Muhammad, also becomes angry, also speaks out of his emotions. So Abdullah ibn Amr says, I stayed silent after I heard the words of Quraysh and I went directly to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. And I told him, Ya Rasulullah, O the Messenger of Allah, O the Master of Messengers, the Quraysh, these are their words. But I stayed silent, I did not respond. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi turns to Abdullah ibn Amr and he says, I swear by the one that my life is in his hands. That everything that comes out of my mouth comes directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I speak nothing from my own. I swear by the one that my life is in his hands. That everything that I speak or do comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But as we mentioned, there was an opposition against Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi and his teachings. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, our beloved prophets would tell the Muslims to gather hadiths and his opposition would tell the Muslims to stop and refrain from gathering hadiths. Of course, this opposition happened in two stages. Stage one was during the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi, as we witness in the book of Ahmad ibn Hanbal, in this hadith by Abdullah ibn Amr. And the second opposition started after the departure of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi. As soon as our Prophet left and departed this world, another opposition started. An opposition with its own agenda. An opposition that actually did root from Quraysh and had ties with Quraysh, as we mentioned. That never left its ties with Quraysh. Those who never left their belief in polytheism never stopped worshipping idols. And even if they entered Islam, they entered Islam not out of acceptance to the religion of Allah and His Messenger, but they entered Islam to protect themselves and to hold up this opposition and to hold up this agenda to destroy Islam within. This uh, episode has come to an end. We wish that you continue this journey with us on this show, The Master of Messengers, and we hope to see you again 
والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته